All right, ladies and gentlemen, we want to start our lecture for today. This is correlation and regression. This is correlation and regression. And like I've always been saying, if you want to make your dreams come true, the first thing you have to do is wake up. That's what power, Jim Power said, wake up. Wake up, sometimes we want to achieve. And always remember that the greater you push your brain, the more powerful it becomes. The more pain you gain, the more powerful or achievement that you are able to get. Okay. So we'll be learning quite a lot of things. I want to set the pace for you. Research projects that we do, thesis. Well, all of your postgraduate students, and you'll be writing thesis, you know, MPhil thesis, PhD thesis. And then even you'll be writing, you know, articles, papers for publications and all of that. All of these involve the linkages between two or more variables. For example, what is the relationship between the blood pressure of a person and the weight of that person? The possibility is that if the person's blood pressure is high, the person's weight is also high. Now, it is a relationship. I did not draw any causality. But then, apart from that, there will be other factors that can affect the blood pressure, such as age, stress, diet. All of this can also affect the blood pressure, exercise, and all of that. But the certain assumptions may have to be made. They have to be in place in order for you to model such a relationship. And that's the session. That's what the session examines. Okay. We are trying to draw association, which is correlation, and also causality, which is regression. And you come to know that the two are different. Other examples could be things in the normal world. What is the relationship between consumption and income? If your income goes up, what will happen to your consumption? If they do a lot of CSR, what will happen to your performance? Or if your performance goes up, what will happen to your CSR? All of these are drawing relationships. Okay, they're drawing relationships. The main book for this regression, whole regression book, cross-sectional and panel data regression. I will not be teaching you time series econometrics. Okay, I'd rather be teaching you panel data econometrics and cross-sectional econometrics. So what we'll be doing today and the next few times will be cross-sectional. Okay, cross-sectional econometrics. So Cameron and Trevetti are quite a good book. Microeconometrics are quite good. Greeny, okay, Bill Green. It's a very good book. It is a standard econometric analysis book. Gujarati gives you the foundation, Woodridge, Bridge, the two, and several other ones. Okay, so let's start with correlation. What is correlation? Correlation or bivariate correlation, it deals with the connection between two variables. Okay, so let's look at um, correlation in terms of whether it is strong or weak. The thing is that correlation can be strong, then it can also be weak. For example, what do you think is a correlation between a brother? And a sister, in terms of whether it's strong or weak, what would you think? Okay, just type the answer for me. What is the correlation between a brother and a sister? Is it strong or weak? Between a brother and a sister. Let me see. It's strong. Yeah, you're right. It's strong. Now, what about between two cousins compared to a brother and a sister? What about two cousins? That one will be weak. Okay, cousin is weak. Yeah, cousin is weak. Now, so that tells you the strength of the correlation. Now, you can also look at whether the correlation is positive or negative. Positive or negative. So let's take an example. What do you think is the correlation between consumption and income? Is it positive or negative? Consumption and income. Is it pop or net? Is it positive or negative? Okay, it is positive. Yeah, positive, positive, positive. Excellent. 
Excellent, 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 excellent. Very good. Now, what about between price and quantity demanded? Between price and quantity demanded? That one is negative. Okay, that one is negative. That one is not positive. That one is pure negative. Okay, so very good. So the, the, the relationships, they are very important for you to be able to you know, appreciate them. Now, I want you to look at what I'm about to show you. Okay. Look at the relationship that you see on your screen here. Is it positive or negative? The relationship you see on your screen, is it positive or negative? If you don't take care, you make a mistake here. Yeah? It's positive. Why? Because the two people are moving together. They are moving in the same direction. That's positive. Now, this relationship, is it positive or negative? I guess there's no question about that. Okay, they are moving in opposite direction. So that is what? That is negative. Okay. Now, this negative or positive thing that we are talking about here, yeah, the thing is that you can't really just get up and say positive or negative, positive or negative. What you can do is that you can use a coefficient to measure it. You can use a statistic that will quantify the relationship. And the best statistic is a percentage statistic. So the statistic must fall between negative one to positive one because the value is either negative or positive. And if it is zero, what is the relationship? If it is zero, okay. If it is zero, not negative, not positive, okay. If the relationship is, if the value is zero, we say the relationship is what? Neutral or no relationship. Neutral or no relationship, that's it. Neutral or no relationship. So we are gonna get some things, but the thing is, the absolute value of the correlation is more important than the strength of the correlation. This is critical. Let me just give you an example here. So look on the board here, okay? Look on the board. I have a value of negative 0 0.98, okay? Let me just write it properly so that I see. I have a value of negative 0 0.98. And then I have a value of positive point. Eight, nine. Which of these has a strong relationship? Which of these numbers has a strong relationship? Okay. Is it the top one or the down one? Okay. Is it the T, the top one or the down? Which one has a strong relationship? Which one has a strong relationship? The top or the down? Okay. The top or the down. I'm getting some top, 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 down, 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 top, down, 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 top. Okay, exactly. So that means that some of you are not that quite sure. Now, the absolute value of the number is important than the number. As for whether you attach negative or positive, it is just showing you the direction of the relationship. It doesn't tell you the strength because it can be negatively strong or it can be positively strong. And so the strong, the one with a strong relationship is the top one. That is the top one, okay? That is the top one because the sign doesn't matter. Of course it matters, but I mean, in terms of strength, the sign doesn't matter. So do not use negativity and positive. You see, some people use the word negative in a bad way. And some use positive in a bad way. Are you coming to the program negative? Negative means that I am not coming, you know? And so people think that anything negative is bad. No, in mathematics, negative can be very good. For example, if you raise your price and your price is so high, and then I decide to reduce my quantity demanded okay, and the relationship is negative. Is it bad that I've reduced my quantity demanded when the price is high? No, 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 no that's not, okay? because your price is high, I will surely reduce my quantity. So you got to understand that negative doesn't mean, you know, bad thing, okay? So that is it, the absolute value is important than the actual number. Now let's go back. So there are types of 
I told you that we need a coefficient to measure the correlation. The correlation coefficient, there are three of them. And I would want you to read about each one of them on your own. Okay, in my other videos, they are there. The first one, which we shall do actually, is the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. Now, this is a parametric correlation test. Parametric here means that you use this one when you assume that the data is normally distributed. The other two are non-parametric, Spearman's and Kendall. We use it when the data has a rank, okay? When you have rank data. So just type it into Google or anywhere, read any of the books, and it's very simple to understand. The most important thing is that don't just use them by heart. Know when you use them. If you are dealing with a non-parametric data set, a data that has skewed, okay? now that means that you have to check whether the data is normal or is not normal. And then in this course, we will learn about normality. So once you test for normality and it is normal, then you use a parametric test. If it is not, you will use a non-parametric test. Okay. So that's what we use to measure the strength of the relationship. Then you might want you to look at the chart that I have on your screen here. Okay. You are going to tell me, when I put my cursor on it, you tell me the relationship between X and Y. When I put a cursor on it, okay. So you tell me. So I'm going to circle or rectangle some of them. So let's take the first one on the bottom left, okay. The one I have you know, captured. The one I've captured on the bottom left, bottom left. What is the relationship between X and Y? What is the relationship between X and Y? Okay. If you know you are guessing, don't type it. I like the way some of you are typing inverse, which means that you understand that inverse is the same as negative. Exactly, the relationship between X and Y is negative. Why? Because you can see it, okay? If you look at it very carefully, okay, as you increase the, the X, the Y is falling. Okay. So you can see that as I move from the origin upward on the X, you see along this line, the Y will be what? Will be falling. The Y will be going down there. So that is an indication that the relationship is what? Is negative. Okay. Now, let me take you to this second one. Okay. This second one on the top left here. On the top left. On the top left. There. Okay. I've circled, I've rectangular it. What do you think is the relationship between X and Y for that? For this one? What do you think is the relationship between X and Y? I think this is obvious, eh? This is so obvious. Type some. When your colleagues are typing, you two, you must type some. What is the relationship between X and Y? It is positive. Yeah, it's positive. But, but most of you have indicated that it's positive. Somebody even added positive linear. I like that. Positive linear. That person is in my good books. Because when you say positive linear, it's clear. But then the other two I'm gonna show you guys, is you're gonna suffer. You're gonna struggle, but you're gonna get it. Okay, you're gonna get it. So let's see whether I can crack those ones. Let's look at the one on the top right first. What is the relationship between X and Y here? What is the relationship between X and Y? Ah, I think that the, the, the answers are going down now. The speed at which most of you are typing, the speed it has come down, okay? The relationship between X and Y, what is it? What is the relationship there between X and Y? Well, I can tell you that somebody has gotten it so far. All of you who are writing, somebody has gotten it. I've seen concave, nonlinear, positive, negative, and all of that. The relationship is quadratic. Somebody said non-parametric. I wonder whether you know non-parametric yourself for writing that. But the relationship is quadratic. Now that I say quadratic, quadratic is coming a lot. <laughs> quadratic is so coming, flying out. Okay, because, because I said what well, is quadratic. But hey, the thing is that. Why is it quadratic? Because it's quadratic. And there are situations like that in real life. Eh? There are situations that 
things rise and fall. Things will rise, will get to a point to will fall. Take, for example, experience of a footballer. The experience of a footballer. When they are in their you know, teenage years, early 20s, you see that they are very, very skillful. As they move, the skills even increases further. And then when they get into their 30s, the situation begins to change. Now you see that footballer, depending on certain things, there's a, a, a diminishing marginal returns. That was setting okay, at the top there. There'll be a diminishing marginal returns here, okay. which is an indication that now, when the person is playing, the person's experience is falling. And there are so many situations. So, if you look at this, it rises, it gets to a point, and then what? It falls. Okay. It rises, it gets to a point, and then it falls. It rises, it gets to a point, and then it falls. That is a quadratic relationship. Okay. Now, this one, I won't ask you, but who can tell me? The bottom right, the last one on the bottom. What do you think is that relationship? Do you think that the relationship is quadratic or it's not quadratic. Okay, the one here. This one that you see on the on the on the bottom here. Okay, what do you think it is? This 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 is a little bit tricky. Now let me see whether some of you got it. Okay, the relationship is it's a logistic. It carries an exponential logistic relationship. Okay. When you say Kevilinia, that one can go anywhere. But it's actually a, an exponential logistic relationship. And this is normally used in situations of, you know, where you are dealing with binary logic probit programs okay, that you will do later on. So, Benjamin, this is just a way to tell you that relationships do exist in that regard. Relationships do exist. Um, let me see, I've got somebody who has a question here and I pray that a person truly has a question to ask. Grace, Tete, you have a question, so go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, I typed it in earlier, but I think because of the last question, you didn't see it. So I've heard um, people mention or refer to the third one we did as a normal curve and I wanted to know if it relates in this um, regard. No, it's not. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, okay. So let's move on. Now, I want you to look at the relationships I have on the screen. And your job is to tell me whether the relationship is positive or negative. Now, I want you to take 30 seconds to go through them. And then make sure that you can raise your hand because once you raise your hand, I expect that you should be able to tell me any one of them. And then I will ask you to choose, I'll give you any one of them for you to tell me whether it is positive or negative relations. This is part of that. So raise your hand if you think you can, you can champion some of them. Raise your hand if you can do some. I'm going to ask you, just tell me whether the relationship you see is positive or negative. And may the good God be with you. Hmm? May the good God be with you. May you crack it. So let's start with Elvis Boatin. Um, Elvis, let me unmute you. And Hussein Nuruddin, get ready. Hussein Nuruddin, get ready. Elvis, tell Doc. me the last one, work and leisure. Doc, it's negative. It's negative, okay. I think Elvis is, is, is aware of where he's going. It's negative. But as you increase your work, your leisure goes down. As you put in more leisure, your work also goes down. Well, you'll be surprised as these days, some people, when they are holidaying, like I'm about to fly to Maldives, okay? When they are holidaying, they will be working at the same time. And I'll be in Maldives and I'll still be teaching you online. So it doesn't always work like that. But I mean, generally speaking, there appears to be a negative relationship. Okay, so that is done. Uh, Nuruddin uh, Hussein, can you tell me about the next one? 
Priscilla and to get ready. Yes, new reading. GPA and SAT score. GPA and SAT score. I was rather going for the. Don't go for anything. Don't worry if you can't do it. If you can't do it, no problem. Okay. Okay, it's positive. The GPA and SAT. All right. So GPA and SAT score is positive. That one we know. Okay, if you your GPA is going up, your SAT score is going up and all of that. Okay, Priscilla Enchi. Um, Stephen Morrison, Priscilla Enchi. Okay, you should be ready. And tell me the next one. Stephen Morrison, Priscilla Enchi. Yeah, Priscilla, tell me depression and suicide. Depression and suicide, I think it's positive. Depression and suicide is positive. Yeah, That's yeah. correct. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. Because if the person is more depressed, the likelihood is that he will kill himself. Very good. Morrison, tell me smoking and longevity. Doc, please, smoking and longevity is a negative relationship. It's a negative relationship. If you smoke, <laughs> you will die. You will die early. And so you don't live longer. So that is true. Excellent. Jeffrey Isando, education and salary. Sir, please, it's a positive relationship. Are you sure? Steve, sir. Yeah, you're right. Okay, it's a positive link, okay, generally speaking. But I, 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 I will know these days things are changing. Some of you will finish school. You go and do your master's, and then you realize that your salary is still as where it was. No change, nothing. You go and do your PhD, permanent head damage, and then things are not that much improving. So, but generally speaking, all of these are general. Let's go to the last one, Victor. Victor. Um, Victor, cold weather and air condition. What would you say? So it's negative. Are you sure? Yes, sir. The cost of air condition and then cold weather. And you said it's negative. When the weather is cold, less air condition, the price of air condition will go down. Okay. <laughs> very good, very good. Very good. That is if you are in a place like, like Africa. Yeah, so that is it. That is it. Your ability to strike all of these chords is an indication of your understanding of correlation. Now, please note that we didn't ascribe causality or cause you know, anything to this. It's just correlation. That's what we are pouring out here. All right. So we are going to take a real life data set, okay? And then we are going to apply all that we've done right here, right now, using the R package as well. So I'm going to give you a, an applied scenario. This is a kind of a simulation exercise. You are about to write a thesis or a journal article. You are about to write a paper and the title of the paper is Determinants of Demand in the Alcoholic Beverage Industry in Ghana. Impact of Location, Occupation, and Religion. This is the title. Determinants of Demand in the Alcoholic Beverage Industry in Ghana. So you believe that previous studies have looked at factors that affect the demand for the alcohol in the industry. You believe that. For example, there have been factors like the price of the alcohol okay, will affect the demand for the alcohol. You've seen this. You also have recognized that the complement price of alcohol, okay, Effect. Now, who can tell me some of the compliments of gin bitters, Akwetashi gin bitters, alcohol? Okay. Who can tell me? Type it. What are some of the some of the compliments? If you don't understand compliment, it means that they move together. You don't enjoy the alcohol alone. Okay. No, no, no. You, I, I said compliment. I didn't say substitute. Okay. So when you say very means you, that is not a compliment. The remains here is not a compliment. Pork, I will agree with pork. Um, sweetener, 
fufu, kebab, atage, peanut, ke, lice soup, lemon, football match, chinchinga. Hey, goodness me, people have been enjoying alcohol. People are taking akweteshi a lot. That is a Ghanaian name for alcohol, akweteshi. For those of you who are foreigners, okay? You mean alcohol goes with insult? Can you imagine? Somebody says a compliment of alcohol. Honeymoon. <laughs> oh, goodness me. You make me laugh in capital letters. Honeymoon is a compliment of alcohol. Okay. egg and then pepper. That's good. Parties. Oh, goodness me. Coca-Cola. So somebody would take the alcohol and mix it with Coca-Cola. Broken heart. <laughs> This is good. This is good. <laughs> Broken heart goes with taco. <laughs> I think that is an outlier. That happens on a COVID 19. I believe so. I believe COVID 19 has led to a lot of increase in alcohol. Okay, so that will kill all the viruses in your stomach. Funeral, giza, depression. Wow. This is good. So these are the compliments of alcohol. So all of these, you believe that can affect the demand, okay? Now, you, so you believe that the price of alcohol, the price of the gym bitters, the price, the complement price, you also believe that the income of the people can affect, okay? You also believe other factors. But one thing you've observed in the literature is that previous studies, they have not considered potential effect of the location of the shop and the occupation of the people. That's what you have seen. And of course, you will have to justify this with references in the literature that they have not considered these facts. Then you will also come out and have realized a few studies have considered religion all right, but most of the time they consider Christian religion. They have not included Buddhism or Mohammedanism, Muslim, as, as one of the religions that can affect. So, so the only Consider the religion in totality for Christian, but they've not considered several other religions. And that's where you are going to fill the gap. You see how we are trying to. So, this is what you are bringing on board. You are bringing in, incorporating location and occupation, and then you are incorporating religion into the picture. Of course, there are other gaps you may identify, such as previous studies have used ANOVA and correlations, but they have not used regression, which is what you are going to use. But of course, you will do the correlation first before you do. So this is, this is a, a thesis that you're going to write. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how do you proceed with this thesis? Okay. So you will state the problems. That I'm just giving you how you go about writing your paper or writing your thesis or your project. So you will make the introduction and then you state your problem. Okay. So the first thing when you're writing the thesis, is the background of the study. If you are taking notes, this is where you want to take the notes. The background of the study. Then you go to the problem statement. Problem statement. Then based on the problem you stated, you delineate or fish out the contributions of the study. So now that you stated the problem, now what is your contribution? What are you adding to the body of literature? So contribution is the third one. From the contribution, you couch your purpose and objectives of the study. You may have a general objective, and then you may have some sub-objectives. After that, from the objectives, you can easily write your research questions. Some people would want to write the research questions in the form of a question. Others will want to also write it in the form of hypothesis. So they'll formulate hypothesis one, hypothesis two, hypothesis three, and then write the null and alternative hypothesis for each of them. Please, from hypothesis, you can get questions. And from questions, you can also get hypothesis. Once you've gotten these research questions, of course, that's what you're going to answer. Then you now go to what is known as the literature review. The literature review. So you will do a critique of previous works and endorse other people's works. Okay. And then bring in where you come in and where you fill in. Okay. You will look at continental review, country review, industry specific review, 
okay, subject-specific, conceptual framework-specific review, methodological reviews, and several other reviews that you can have. Then the next will be about your data. So you will now have to go gather data either through you know, secondary or primary sources. The goal of getting the data is to answer those research questions. If you are gathering data and the data is not gonna help you to answer the research questions, then you are not doing anything. So I've given you a step-by-step -step way of writing thesis from, from, from MIT, University um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so that you go there on this link and go and read and understand and expand your mental gymnastics about how to write a journal article in a scientific manner. Okay. So these are some of the things I will go. So have this in mind and see that you are embarking on this research. How do you proceed? Let's go to the data set we started talking about. Okay. And I've already given you a link, a YouTube link of the data. You guys can see it here. Okay. Where you will see the gym because Aburukutu, Aburukutu. That is the name of the company. So this is a company that it wants to do the research. And you collected the data on this company. This company, Brukutu Ventures, is a local gin distillery. They are into the alcoholic beverage industry. And they are very much concerned about the demand for its gin bitters. See, as far as they are concerned, demand is most of, in most of the retail shops in the country, demand has been hard hit due to new entrants into the market. And you can see that there's always every month, there are newcomers of alcohol coming in into the industry. And this Brukutu Ventures, the management are concerned. Management is very, very concerned and they want to know those factors, those predictors, those independent variables that better explain the quantity demanded of gym because. Of course, they are aware of the price. But apart from the price, there are other determinants of demand. The first one they identified was the price of the complement of demand. So complement price, okay, that is one. Then the average income of the people. The income of the people is represented by M. So you will know if the people's income goes up, what will happen to demand? Now, in this context, we can consider gym bitters as what kind of good? Who can tell me? Looking at the scenario so far, what kind of good in terms of income? Is it a normal good, an inferior good, a superior good, a luxury good, or a different paradox good? What kind of good do you think okay, for, for gym bitters? It is, it is a normal good. It is a normal good, okay? Gym bitters is a normal good, okay? And the reason is because um, it's, 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 not, it's not kind of good where, it's not like whiskey and those kind of special alcoholic beverages, no. It's, it's one of those things. Okay, this is a data. And guys, I'm sure you all have the data, don't you? This is a data. So look at the data. The first section here on the far left, is the quantity demanded of the gym bitters. That's what you have on the far left here. Okay. That's the quantity demanded of the gym bitters. Now the second is the price of the gym bitters. Okay. So the price in Ghana cities, that's what you see there. Okay. That's the price. This is the price of gym bitters. Okay. The next thing is the complement price. Complement price is the column C. The income of the people is the column M. Of course, there are three other ones that we want to talk about. And they have been explained down here. The first is location of the shop. Location of the shop. Remember, the Brukutu Ventures has several locations. And there are two. So this is not a, a, a numerical data. This is a dummy. And it is represented by one if the location is urban or zero if the location is rural. Okay, now 
you will notice that there are how many levels for location? There is one dummy for location, but there are how many levels? Who can tell me? There are two levels, very good. Very good, Akuya. There are two levels for location. There's another kind of dummy variable that is occupation. So you believe that the occupation of the people, whether the people are teachers, fishers, or traders, it can affect their demand for the gym bitters, the alcohol. Now, occupation has how many levels? Occupation has how many levels? You know, it has three. Okay, so how many dummies do you think occupation should have? And you're gonna put something down. How many dummies should occupation have? First of all, occupation should never have three dummies. And the occupation should never have one dummy. Note that the number of dummies are always one less than the number of levels. The number of dummies are always one less than the number of levels. So occupation will have two dummies. And an occupation can choose any of the two out of the three to create. Then the one that is not coded as a dummy becomes a reference category. That is a zero otherwise. So you can see that you are told that OT is one if occupation is teaching or zero otherwise. OTR is one if the people are traders or zero otherwise. Nothing was mentioned about fishes or fishing. Nothing was mentioned about that. So it means that fishing is the reference category. It means our fishing is a zero otherwise. Okay. So what does that mean if you are the reference category? What it means is that anytime you are talking about teaching, you are talking about teaching in reference to fishing. And it also means that anytime you are talking about trading, you are talking about trading in reference to what? Fishing. So fishing, that is not mentioned in the statement, becomes the reference category. Okay. If you are not clear, just type not clear. And then I can go over it. But I think that the principle of, of reference category, you got to understand. Let's go back to the occupation. Sorry, let's go back to the location. I'll use a location, don't worry. I'll use a location again to explain. If you look at location, because the levels are two, urban and rural, one of them should be the reference category. In other words, one of them must be given a value of zero. And in this case, which one was given a value of zero? Was it an urban? Remember, this is a binary, okay? It's a dichotomous variable, it's a dichotomous variable. Okay? So in this very case, it's two. But then it's, it's not always binary, it can be multiple. So the reference category will be rural, isn't it? It will be rural. Now, you will not see in the regression, what we later do, you will not see the rural. You will only see urban because the LU being one means that you want urban to appear. Zero for rural means that you don't want rural to appear. But these people, they move together, okay? They move together. So anytime you are mentioning urban, you are saying that the place is urban. You are talking about urban in relation to something you, because it's not, it's not a number. Urban is not numerical. It is categorical. And so because it's categorical, it is in reference to something. You can't say that um, the, the person I saw was a man. Now, once you say that the person I saw was a man, even though you didn't add, but not a woman, in my mind, I should understand that you are talking about was a man, but not a, a woman, isn't it? Once you mention he was a man, you are saying he was a man in reference to he not being what? A woman, that's it. And so even though I don't mention that, I don't mention means that it is zero. That's it, rural is zero. But it doesn't mean that, you know, it is not part of your discussion. It is implicit in your discussion. Okay. So that is it for, for location and occupation. Now go to religion. 
So once again, you can see that religion has how many levels? Religion, it has how many levels? It has three. So how many dummies do we have? How many dummies are we expecting for religion? We're expecting two dummies, two dummies. Now, if you look at the storyline, what was a reference category for religion? If you look at the story here, what was a reference category for religion? Type some. When your people are typing, eh? type some. You know, type some. You are typing what is in your head. You are not typing what somebody typed. Mm -hmm. It's what's in your head. Don't say, that, oh, I was going to type Buddhist, then the person I type Buddhist, I don't have to type Buddhist. Okay? You are typing what's in your head. Mm -hmm. So the reference category is Buddhism. Okay? Buddhist. Buddhist. So anytime I speak about Muslims, I am speaking about Muslims in relation to what? Buddhist. That's the point. So Buddhist is a zero. Buddhist is a reference category. You will not see Buddhist in the results. But you should have it in mind that it is a reference category. And so anytime you are interpreting the others, it has to be interpreted in relation to. Uh -huh. We'll come to the proper interpretation of this. I'm just giving you a, a bit of the feel of the data set. Okay, a feel of the data. All right, so this data is in Excel and you can do a lot of manipulations of it in Excel. So I want you to, open your own Excel data. So get your data and open it. I'm gonna move so fast with the Excel because I'm not interested in using the Excel. I'm interested in us using the R. But I'm gonna do for Excel one so fast. So let me just show you the Excel. So as you can see, this is a data set. Okay. This is how you see the data set. Excel does not deal with the column EFG, why, why? Excel doesn't deal with location, occupation, and religion. Why do you think so? The reason, Ruben. Okay, let's go to Ruben. Ruben might have a reason why. Um, oh, Ruben's son is done okay. Okay, so the reason is Excel cannot handle string data. Excel cannot deal with string data. Excel cannot deal with categorical data. Excel will deal with numerical data. So, that's, that's even a more reason. So if you were to use Excel, you've got to convert each one, each of this information to what? To dummy codes, dummy codes. So I have to create a column. I have to create one column here, okay, for location. And then since urban is one and rural is zero, whatever I see rural, I should have what? Zero. Whatever I see urban, I should have one. So urban here will be one. Okay, rural here will be zero. Whatever I see urban, it will be one. Whatever I see rural, it will be zero, like that. Okay, just like this. This is exactly what I mean. So you code it, and I've done this here. Okay, so in this second one, you will see that I have what? I have the coded version. So I've created location urban, where you have one, one, zero, one, zero. And then for the occupation, I created the dummy for occupation teaching, OT. Occupation trading, OTR. So what it, occupation teaching here is doing is that in this column here, wherever there is teaching, it must be one. Okay, so if we go to the R data set, okay, whatever you see teaching is one. So you can see that the first one is teaching. Second is fishing. Third is teaching. So first one will be what? One. Second one will be what? Zero, because it's fishing, it's not teaching. Third one will be what? One. Fourth one will be what? Zero. So let's go and see. Okay, teaching. You can see first one is one, second one is zero, third one is one, fourth one is zero. Okay. And then what you do for trading two? 
you can see in the in the general one that first one is not trading, so it will be zero. Second one is not trading, so it will be zero. Third one is not trading, so it's zero. Fourth one is not trading, so it's also zero. It is a fifth one that is trading, so that becomes one. So when you go to occupation trading, you can see that the number five, the number five here, that was the one that got a value of one. And you can use the same principle, okay? So, so you can use the same principle now to get what? To do for religion. So I did for religion, Christian, and then the religion, Muslim. So this is the data. Now, everything now is numerical. So Excel will understand this. Okay. Like I said, I'm not keen on Excel, but I'll just use that very quickly. So the first thing we are going to do in Excel is we are going to generate quick, in fact, just three things. Two things, actually. We're going to generate descriptive statistics. Okay. So you go to the top of your tab and you look for data, data tab at the top. Data tab at the top. Okay. And then on the far right, you see data analysis. On the far right, you see data analysis. If you don't see data analysis, type can't see data analysis. What it means is that you've never used it before. Can't see data analysis. Okay. So first you click on the data tab, and then on the far right, you see data analysis. Click on the data analysis. If you can't see that, you let me know. Okay. And when you click on data analysis, the data analysis dialog box will pop out. The data analysis dialog box will pop up. Somebody type that. Isaac Kofi, just relax. We are not interested in what you're saying. Okay. So since many of you have not seen data analysis, it means I need to go and show you how to get it. This is, this is interesting, right? All right, so quickly, how do you get data analysis? You go to file, a okay, file on the far left. On the far left, type file. Click on file, file tab. On the far left, top left. When you click on file, I'll go through this just once. File, then you see the pop-up will come. In the list on the far left, you will see options. Okay, options. Click on options on the bottom. You see open, info, save, save, share, publish, and then you see options. Click on options. A pop-up will show. This pop-up is the Excel options parameter dialog box. In that pop-up on the left pane, on the left pane, you will see add-ins. Add-ins, click on add-ins. Click on add-ins. And then in the list, in the list, you see analysis two pack. You will see that your analysis tool pack is under inactive applications. You will see it under, please note, I didn't say analysis tool pack DBA. No, I said analysis tool pack. Click on it like I've clicked on mine in blue. Click on it like I've clicked on mine in blue. Then once you've clicked on it, come down and choose go. Under the manage Excel addings, choose go. When you click go, a pop-up will show. It is the add-ins parameter dialog box. The add-ins parameter dialog box. Ah, in there, you will see that some of them have been ticked or none of them have been ticked. Tick analysis to pack. Tick. You see that mine is tick. So on tick and tick, tick. Tick means you mark, like pass, correct. Instead of, you know, you see tick. Down, that's it. Once you do the tick, click OK. Click OK. And then when you go to your data tab now, on the far right, on the far top right, you should now see data analysis. If you now can see the data analysis, type C. If you can see it now, just type C or C. Excellent, beautiful. You see, I'm a good teacher and you're a good student. So it means that you've been able to do that. Now that you are great, fantastic. Now let's proceed and go to click the data analysis. Click on the data analysis now. Since you can see it now, click on it. And in the list, you will see something we call descriptive statistics. Go to D, go to D, they are in alphabetical order. 
and choose descriptive statistic. Then click OK. The pop up will show. The pop up will show. This pop up is known as the descriptive statistics dialog box. Okay. The pop up will show. Okay. Now, in that pop up, the first thing you see is input range. Input range. So we are going to collect all of the data for the Brukutu code. Though. This data you see at the back. We're going to highlight from Q, drag it all the way to RM, and drag it all the way down to select the entire data set. Like this. Okay. So let me do that again. And then when you do that, it will be collected in the input range. Okay. It will be collected in the input range. So what you do is this, okay? You will click on the first letter, which is Q, hold and drag it all the way down. If you make a mistake, just delete whatever is in the input range and do it again. Make sure you don't exceed. Sometimes when you are dragging, it will exceed the last values. Just come back to the last, the very last, and then release your hand. You will see that inside the input range, you have A1 colon, I-41, A1 colon I-41. When you say mine does not have, when you, what do you mean by mine does not have? And of course, some of you will be lost, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Every year, some get lost. So when you are lost, what you have to do is to take it up again, later with your police or you watch it all over again. So once you've collected the data, you see the data inside the input range. The grouped by is columns, so leave it. Then tick labels in first row, because when we were selecting, we selected a first row. Tick labels in first row. Then click on the output range. Click on the output range. Okay. When you click on the output range, then you click on the white space to the right of the output range. The white space to the right of the output range. It just wants you to select one cell where you want the results to be. So just under column J, I am going to click just the cell under column J. Okay, you see my cursor hovering there. So I just click that. So that becomes J1, J1. I want the results to be from J, K, L, M going. So I click on J. Once you are done with that, come and click summary statistics. Click summary statistic. Take it, actually. Take it. Take it. And you are done. You are done. You are about to click OK. And when you click OK, the good God will be with you, and you get a beautiful result. OK. And now you can see the beautiful summary statistics. Okay. Of course, you can arrange this one. Okay. Let's take the first one. The first one is kill. So this is a summary statistics you get. And the first one is Q, which means the quantity demanded of gym vitus. It gives you the mean of the quantity demanded. This is the mean. And it tells you the value of the mean, okay? It tells you the value of the mean. And you can see that in this context, the value of the mean is 175. Now the mean is is the quantity demanded of gym betas. And the quantity demanded of gym betas is 175. The standard error is 4.7. The median is also 175. The mode is 160. The standard deviation is 29. 29.79. Then you have other descriptive statistics. When you are doing your research, the main descriptive statistics we deal with for parametric data are the mean, the standard deviation. I'm just giving you the common ones. The mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, and then the maximum. Basically, this is what you need. Now you can see that observations are 40. The number of observations are 40. 
Of course, we are not talking about that one. But the key descriptive statistics are the following. So these are the, now what you can normally do is that you can delete this one, you can move all of this and then you can arrange them nicely. So I, you can just move all of this and just move it one step further. Okay. So just do it like this. You understand what I'm doing, that one side. And then you just delete all of these repetitions of the names, okay? Delete them. You delete the repetitions of the name. You delete the repetition. And then you can have, you know, the main things that you are looking for. That's it. So you can see here that everything is well arranged. And here you can even decide to just focus on the ones I've highlighted. That's it. This is a descriptive study for every variable. Now you will later learn that for the dummy variables, there's no need to get their descriptors. That is why the maximum is one and the minimum is zero for them. Because you can't find the mean for gender. A person is a man or a woman, and you are trying to find the mean. And you can see that the mean, the mean for the binary ones, like OT, is just giving you 0.5. Okay. How can you get 0.5? 0.5 of uh, occupation or religion. Now you have 0.3. So the means of the, the, the descriptive statistics for, for dummy variables, for categorical variables, for string variables, they are not important. And R is sensible on that. R is sensible. Excel is not sensible on that. So what I've just done is to give you descriptive statistics for the, but in Excel, okay, like I said, we're not going to do much on that, but it's just for your intellectual capacity. Now let's go and do the next one, which is the correlation. We are going to generate a correlation matrix for the Excel. So go to the data tab again at the top. You're going to put the results just down below the descriptive status, just down here, okay. just down. All right, so click on the data tab. On the far right, click on data analysis again. This time you don't go to D, you go to C, and you see correlation, correlation, correlation. C correlation C. Double click it, the correlation dialog box will come. You will see input range, input range. So on the white space, click on kill, the same thing, highlight all the way to RM, the same thing, drag it all the way down to the last thing. You know how to do this. Then remember to scroll up to see what you've done. Then take labels in first row, just as we always do and take output range, a pop-up will come. Okay. And then click on the white space to the right of the output range and just select where you want the results to be. I want the results to be in J17, cell J17, where my cursor is hovering. And then that's it, you click OK. Beautiful correlation matrix is given out here. Now, these correlation matrices are not in two decimals. It's a beautiful, 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 beautiful correlation matrix. It's not in decimals. So we just want it to be in two decimal places. Whilst it is still highlighted, okay? Whilst it's still highlighted, click on Home tab. Click on the Home tab. And then you see, under the Home tab, you see something called General. You can see me show you a general, okay? The number format general. There's a little arrow under the general in this space. Click on that arrow and then choose number. Once you choose number, everything will be converted to beautiful two decimal places, just like that. Excellent. So now we don't have too many numbers eating up your eyes. So this is how you generate a correlation matrix, okay. which is cool, which is cool, it's very cool. Of course, you can use the same principle to do regression. So when you go through the same approach, you can do your regression as well. Um, for, I just want to do the regression down here so that at least you know. Like I said, this is not the one that I'm normally interested in. I'm interested in using that. And since we are here already, why don't I show you how you do the regression? So I'm going to put a regression below the correlation matrix. So once again, click on the data tab, go to the far right data analysis, and I'm moving faster. And then you double click on regression. 
for regression, you need a dependent variable and then independent variables. So the dependent variable is quantity demanded. That is the one which is being affected by all of these variables. So let's look at quantity. So click for the input Y range, click on the Q and drag only the Q down, only the Q down. Okay. Then for the input X range, you do the same thing. This time you're, all of them are X. So click on the P alone, drag it to the RM and drag all of them down because they are all the X input, the independent variable. Click on labels, okay? If you want the confidence interval, you click on confidence interval. I don't want that. Okay. Click on the output range, click on the right side, the space on the output range and select where you want the results to be. I've just selected J28. If you want the residual plot the line fit and all of it, you can pick some of them. Let me just pick some of the line fit plots and the normal probability plot for the residuals. And then click OK. By the way, those plots are not beautiful. Once you click OK, this is a result. Okay. You see the entire results. So we'll talk about all of these later in R. And then once again, you can bring the results. There are all many, so you can change it to two decimal using the same general number approach that I told you. Everything now is in two decimal places. And then the residual plots are down here. The probability plots are also up there. But this is how you generate. You can see that you have your coefficient, the standard error, the t-statistic, the p-value, the upper and lower confidence intervals for every independent variable. You have the ANOVA in the middle here, and then you have the regression statistics there. We will talk about all of this at a later time. Because we are in X, R, um, Excel, I've decided to do descriptive statistics, correlation, and then regression. Wow. What a speed of learning. Did you get it? Yeah. It was, it was, it was speed of learning. It was hot. It was, it was mental gymnastics. I know, I know some of you, you know, um, some of you decided, some of you will not get it. It's okay. It's okay. Like I said, when you go and watch this thing again and again, you should be able to do it. Okay. It's okay. Like I said, this is not even the important thing. I've given you a bonus. My interest is not on the coded data, okay? My interest is on this. This is a human being data, I call it, because this is a sensible one. So we're gonna take this data to R. So now I want you to open your R, the R Studio. I want you to open your R Studio. So I'm just gonna show you my R Studio. Here. This is it. Guys, you see the size, is the size big enough? I have the title here in my command, correlation and simple and multiple regression. Do you see it? Is it big enough? Do you see it? Is it big enough? Somebody says yes, somebody says, I think I see more yes. Excellent, okay, so you see it. Okay. So there, there was a package that I sent to you to install. And this is the package. This is a package that I sent to you to install. Okay. Let me just see those who have been able to install it. If you have installed it, just type install. If you have not installed it, don't type install. Okay. Now you can do that later. Somebody raise their hand and drop their hand. You can do that later. But if you have installed it, let me know. If you have installed it, let me know. Oh, great. Many of you have installed. All right. So for those of you who have installed, I'm going to go through that approach with you. For those of you who have not installed, no problem. Okay, no problem. You can do that later okay, by going over this. Okay, you can do that. Later. All these things I'm doing with you, I'll give you a data set and I'll let you do the same thing. It will be an assignment for you to do it. So just work along with me. So once you type this, you click, first you have to install tidyverse. We use tidyverse, it's a package. We use it to make beautiful tables. Stargazer, we use it to make beautiful tables. Magritte, Magritte TR, 
the sandwich, all of them, they help you in regression analysis. Okay. Beautiful statistics, beautiful tables. Okay. So once you have installed it, for those of you who have installed it, it's already in the memory of the R. Just highlight them like this and just click run at the top. Highlight them like the way I've highlighted them and just click run at the top. And at the down there, you see them populating. Okay. You see them populating down there pop, 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 like that. Okay. Mine is done already. So I want to show you how mine was done. So if you look down here, I just want to show you how mine did. Okay. So this is it. Look on my screen. When I highlighted them and then ran them, it said loading required package, tidy best. It was loaded. Attaching them, it was attached. Okay. And all of them, you see something like this happening. Okay. Something like that. Like all of this, it will show in your console. Okay. All of this will be shown in your console. And that's it. If you get that, fine. You don't get that, no problem. Okay. And this only happened because I highlighted and then installed these packages. Okay. The next thing I want you to pay attention with me on, and ladies and gentlemen, this is critical. Okay. And I'm taking you to the slides here. This is the most important thing. We are going to type these commands into R to load the data from Excel to R. We are going to load the data from Excel to R. So I want you to type these blue commands. Later on, you can type the rest later, or you can copy it from the PDF. Just type the blue commands, okay? Just type this. Just type this. Just type gen equal to, and do that in one of your R. So let me just take you to my R and show you how I did it. So you can see my command number 12, I've typed it there. Gen equal to read dot delim into bracket clipboard. Okay, then you close it. Okay, I've zoomed in a little bit for those who couldn't see, I've zoomed. So this is the, the highlighted one is the one I wanted to type. So just type it, don't run it, don't click anything. Just type it as it is. Just type it. If you have typed that, okay? And then once again, you don't have to run away when you get lost. You have to follow what I'm saying, even when you get lost. You have to take a pen and paper, writing the instructions down, okay? even when you get lost. Because one of the things I see people do is that once they can't follow through, they shut down the everything and then they stop everything and they start eating. Don't do that. Don't do that. The brain can capture a lot of information from where you lost. Okay. So do that, Jim. Once you've done that, go to your Excel and go and copy the whole data. Highlight Control A to highlight the entire data set. And I'm talking about the, the one that included the categorical data. Control A to highlight. Just click inside and then control A to highlight the data. Other than that, click and copy the whole data set. Once you copy it, do control C. Control A will, cop will highlight, control C will copy it. Okay. Once you do control C, come down to your, I think you didn't see this, did you? No, so let me just show you. You click inside the data control A, then you do control C to copy. The diamond glass will be hovering around the data set. Once you're done with that, come to the R. So I'm now inside the R studio. Don't paste it. Don't paste it. Whilst your cursor is blinking. Whilst your cursor is blinking, you click run at the top or you do control C, control enter. So that's what I just did. I did control enter. You see down there in the console, the results is showing. Where well, the results is showing nice blue, which means that my data is loaded. 
my data is loaded. Once your data is loaded, give yourself a big round of applause because what it means is that you've been able to transfer the data from Excel to R. Let me see those who have been able to do that. If you have been able to do that, type Jim in the chat. If you have been able to load the data from Excel to R, type Jim in the chat. Okay, Richfield, I think you have a question. Richfield. No, dog. I was trying. I was trying to type Jim in. in, in. All right. Okay. So, yeah, those of you who have typed in, it means that you've been able to load the data. Like I said, it's not everybody who can do that. And when you don't do it, it doesn't mean that you have failed. What it means is that you have to go through it again and again, because you'll be doing this sometime uh, very soon. Okay, once the data is loaded, we can now get the descriptive statistics that we did in Excel. We can do it in R. Okay, we can do it in R. So, Let's go to the slide and let me show you something very quickly. So in the slide, you see that, how do you know that the data is loaded? One way is that just highlight the gene. Highlight it in R. So let's go to the R. Just highlight only the gene. Watch me, in my command number 12, I've highlighted a gene. Just highlight it and then run that one alone or do control enter. When I do control enter, boom, the entire data set will show down here. Do you see that it's showing down? The entire data set is showing down here when I highlighted the gene. So that means that you can now look at the data in R and then you can be happy that your data is beautifully loaded. There are several ways of loading the data. We are just using the clipboard approach. It's a, it's a very easy approach. And most data are kept in R in Excel, so you can easily copy it from Excel and then bring it to R and then you can look at it. So this shows that the data is loaded. All I did was to highlight the gin and then run it. Okay. All right, somebody says I should slow down small. Okay, so imagine you are listening to this video. Imagine you are listening to this video, Angelina. Will you, won't you be able to slow down millions of times? You will listen and, you know, slow down millions of times. Okay. All right. So, your data is loaded. So those of you who have been able to load the data and you can see it in R, you can see it with your naked eye, just like I'm showing you. Okay. Just write Q. Right Q, and let me be sure that you can see it. If you can see the data, right Q, okay, which means that you can see the gym because the first variable, which is quantity, you can see it, type Q. Okay. I've got about 14 messages, which means that 14 people. Okay. Type Q, and let me be sure whether you can get it. David, you have it. Mariam, you have it. Eric, Henry. Okay, Lamte, Joe, Frank, Tete Bright, all of you have it. Watch it, Prempe, you have it as well. Okay. Now, if you were here to actually come and do this thing today, you will get it. You will get it. Julian, you got it. Okay. Charlotte, you got it. All right. So, majority of you are packing the code. Maclair, you got it. Jeffrey. You got it, Charlotte, you have it. Okay, so the data is in the memory of R. Okay. Now, the next thing you wanna do is also in the slide and everything, by the way, that I'm doing is in the slide. You wanna generate the summary statistics. You remember that summary statistics that we did in Excel, we're gonna do the same thing in R and even more in R. So the first one is summary gen. That's what you're gonna type, summary gen. That's what you type here, the one in blue. And make sure you put a gen in bracket, summary gen. You type it as a next command. You type it as a next command.
Now, for those of you who did the tidy verse that I showed, for those of you who did a tidy verse, okay, there is a command that can help that you can use to have a feel of your data. There's a command. I'm sending you that command. I'll send it in two places for you to copy. I'll send it in the chat here. I'll also send it on the WhatsApp group page. And I'm doing this thing for just those of you who are able to do the tidy verse, who are able to do the installation. Remember, you have it in your chat. Now, what you can do, and I'm going back to that before I come to the summary stats. So what you guys can do is you can type this or highlight all of this, and it will give you something. Let's do the first one. The first one will give you the name because you've done, you have run the tidy base. Remember, this is only for those who have run the install packages that I spoke about. Once you run the first one, which in my case is from 16 to 18, it will give you the top 10 variables, information on about the top 10 observations. The variable information about the top 10 observations. So once you run it, or you control and enter, you will get this. You get the same thing. You get the same thing as the name of the data. Look down in the console. You get the same thing, but just for the top 10. That's why the command was head 10, just for the top 10. That's just the first one. Now the second one, which is 19 to 21, that command. By the way, like I said, the command is in the chat and in the order. That command will tell you whether the data is string variable or integer. So once you run that command, look down here. It will tell you the data frame is 40 observations of seven variables. See what it's telling you? It's giving you a feel of the data. Then for variable Q, it will tell you whether it's an integer. Okay, And it is an integer, so it's telling you. The variable P. It will tell you what is a number. Yes, it's a number. C is an integer. M is a number. The integers and the numbers are the same. But those that are character variables, they are dummy or categorical variables. It will tell you the location. You see, it says it's a character variable. And it tells you the levels, urban, urban, rural, you know, for some of the observations. And the occupation. It tells you that it's a character, which means that it is a categorical variable. And it tells you some of the elements, teaching, fashion, and all of that. And then for religion, it will tell you that it's a character variable and give you like Muslims, Buddhists, Muslims, Christians, and all of that. It gives you examples. So that command just gives you a feel of your data. And then the last one, out of the three I gave you, the last one. When you highlight that, and you click enter, what it's going to do is that it's going to give you the summary. Okay. So look at it, it puts it in a very nice table. Okay. It is select Q into bracket P, C, M, all of the independent variables plus the dependent variable. And then you have your percentage greater than percentage symbols. And then the star gives that type is a text. So what it does is that it gives you a beautiful table okay, of the summary. I just want to flag this before we go into the summary. Okay. So it will tell you the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, the 25th percentile, the 75th percentile, and then the maximum. Whichever one you want, then you take it. But you will see that it will not give you for the dummy variables. You remember I told you that R is sensible. R sees why do you want summary statistics for categorical variable. So you can see that the only variables it gave you were the where the numerical variables, the integers and the numbers. Okay, so with this done, now let's go and do what we're going to do, the summary gen. So this is a command, summary gen, summary gen. So this is going to give you the entire descriptive statistics of the data, okay? Once you highlight or your cursor is there, click run at the top here, or you click control, enter and that's it 
it will give you the summary of all the variables. And once again, I will not give you the summary for the categorical variable. So take, for example, Q here. Q, it will give you the minimum value is 130. The maximum value is 220. The first quarter is 150. The median is 175. The mean is 175. The third quarter. So these are basic descriptors for the Q. For the P, which is the price of the gin, it will give you the same thing. For the complement price of gin, which is C, they give you similar things. And like I've always been saying, the ones you need are the minimum, the maximum, then the mean and the standard deviation. Unfortunately, this very command, which is summary into bracket, the name of the data, gen, it does not give you the standard deviation. Do you guys see that? It doesn't give you the standard deviation. So it means that we need a better package to help us. By the way, when you look at the dummy variables, look at it, location, it's telling you it has class of, the length is 40, the class is a character. It gives you for each one of them. Yeah, so this one, this summary gen doesn't give us the standard deviation. So we need another command. We need another command, another package. And so you are going to, install a package called site. I've highlighted it here, but let me take you to the slide so that you can get it better. So look in the slide and you see the package is called site. I'm highlighting the package for you, site. Please, before you write this command, let's first install the site. I don't think any of you have installed a site yet. So, let us go and install the site together. Install the site together. How do you do that? Let's go to the R. So in the R studio, on the, either the bottom right, you know your R studio is divided into four parts. The, either the top right or the top left, I don't know which one, but you see that there's one section which is called file, plot, Packages, do you see packages? You must have internet to do this. Do you see packages? Click on packages and click on install. Click on packages and click on install. Click on packages and click on install. Once you click on install, the install package the parameter dialog box will pop. They will come. Then type psych in small letters, P S Y. And you see, when you start typing, if you have the internet, it will start showing. And you can just pick and select it. P S Y C H. That is mine showing. That is mine showing. So if yours is showing, you just select that one. Click on that and click install. And once you click install, you will see it installing in the console. This is if you have internet. If you don't have internet, you can't do this very well. Of course, the fact that you are talking to me means that you have internet. So click it and then allow it to beautifully install. Okay, so if you are installing it, once it finishes installing, you see it nicely down here with some red, 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 red information. I have installed it, so I don't need to do this. Once you have installed it, go to your command and type require site. The one I've highlighted, require site. So we are invoking it. Require site. And then once you run the require site, 
it will show down there in the console as blue. We need that package. We need that package before we go to the, the descriptive statistics that gives us more information than the summary statistics we used. So let me see those who have been able to, to invoke the required site. If you have been able to invoke the required site, type P, type P. P for pen, for psych, type P. I've got six people who have been able to do that, seven people now. If you have been able to do the required psych, I've got nine people, 10. Like I always say, don't switch up. If you miss the point, don't switch up. You go to the next one. That's key. That's learning. You don't throw everything away because you missed a step. Okay, I've got 15 people. Once I get 20 people, I'll proceed. Require psych. Require psych. Once you do that. So once you do that require site, please, as you can see, the next command is describe gen. Start writing that. Start writing that in the next command. Okay. Let me see those who have done require site. You have done that. Type P and let me see. If you have done it, type C, P. P for purple. Type it. If you've done it, type it. Okay, so I've got my 21 people. I got 21, so fantastic. So now I want you to type describe gin. Okay, describe gin. And again, this is in the slide. So you can see the second bullet here. Describe gin. Okay, type that. So this is going to be used to give us more summary statistics, more descriptive statistics. Okay. More of the descriptive statistics. And for me to confirm that you are truly doing it, I'll ask you some questions. I'll ask you some questions, so get ready. And the first question I'm going to ask you is, tell me the sample size. Oh, this is 40, so no need. Who can tell me the mean for complement? Look at your results. And tell me the mean for complement, because that will tell me that you've done it. Ransford, you said that you got a warning. That warning, don't worry. Just to go ahead and do it. I want to take it. Okay, so you got 125, which means that you were able to get the 10 correct. Okay, that was a mean for complement, 125. Now, who can tell me the standard error? The standard error for M, income. The standard error for M, income. If you're able to tell me, it means that you did a writing. The standard error for M. M. What was the value of the standard error for M? 0.4, excellent. Okay. This is where I know that you are doing it. This is where I know that you are doing it. Okay. This is where I know. So, so let me just take you to mine, just as yours is also in front of you. And you can see the results down here. This is what you see. Now, what quick observation do you see about these data descriptives? Who can tell me? There's something you notice easily, quickly about the data. Let me see whether Nicholas, you can crack that for us. What, what, what is a quick information? Yeah, Nicholas. Yes, sir. Um, please, I realize that the location, the occupation and religion, they are in Asterish. Meaning? Meaning that they are, we cannot find the mean, they are categorical data, so we cannot find the mean for them. We cannot find the, um, how do you call it, the descriptive statistics for them. Exactly. So it's almost like, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like treat them like they are not there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. You've done well. Okay. Yes, Angelina. Angelina, you have something to say? 
she does. It. All right. So that's a, that's a very good answer. And so I was telling you that guy, I'm telling you that these things are there, but don't pay attention to them. That's why you have them as stars. They are categorical variable. That's why you have them as stars. Fantastic, beautiful, powerfully wonderful. So now that we you see, we are getting a feel of the data. And do you realize that there are more descriptive statistics other than what we had before? Okay, now we have the mean, we have the standard deviation, we have the median. Wow. We have the trimmed mean. Okay, we have the trimmed mean. If you look at the trimmed, the values are just like the mean, if you check them carefully. But they are slightly different, slightly reducible. Some of them are the same. So there is a trimmed mean. Then you have the MAD, which is the minimum absolute deviation. Okay, you have the minimum absolute deviation. It's good you got to understand each one of them. Because sometimes you are doing some work and you will not need a mean, you will need a median. Sometimes you don't need a median, you need a minimum absolute deviation. It helps you to get a feel of what's happening. Then you have the minimum value and the maximum value. And then you have the range. The range helps you just like the standard deviation would do. You have the skewness, you have the ketosis. The, the skewness, the ketosis, all of them are very good for dealing with non-parametric data and, and for determining the, the deviation, the spread of the data set, the dispersion. They are all measures of set, dispersion instead of measures of central tendency. The measures of the central tendency are the mean, the median. Okay. And then the last one is the standard error. So you got to be able to understand each one of them. Anytime you are doing a research, these variables are important in your work. It's very important. Okay. Okay. So, so those of your colleagues who have been able to leave the line, tell them that it's important to learn these things. They should not. I think some of them left the line deliberately because I said there is going to be a recording for this, but I think they missed out. They, they, they missed a lot. They've missed a lot because they might not get what they want. So please tell them to come back and join the class. All right. So now that we've been able to do this, we are now ready to proceed. Okay. You're going to do something we call attach and detach. Attach and detach. You can see that there is an attach and then there's something we are going to do here. And it's important to me. You see, you can describe the data. Now, when we did the descriptive statistics, everything is together. You realize that. But then there are groups. For example, let's assume that you want to know the descriptive statistics according to religion. So you want to know the mean for Christians, the mean for Buddhists, the mean for Muslims, the mean of the complement for each one of them, the mean of the quantity demanded for each one. So you want to categorize them according to groups. How do you do that? Well, to do that, you got to pin the data to the memory of R, and we call it attach. So you type attach gen, and then you type this command called describe by. Type attach gen. When you attach the thing into the memory of R using the attach, always remember to detach later before you exit. So that's why I have the detach also there. So do the attach, okay? And once you do the attach, it will tell you that the following objects are matched. You know, it will tell you some things. Don't worry, don't worry. Once it tells you that, don't worry. Okay. And then go and type the described by gene, comma, and then religion. Remember the religion is R-E-L, all small letters. And note that the described by the B is a capital letter. The B is a capital letter. And so it's important to recognize that. So do that and then run it. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Based on the answer you give me, it will tell me that you did it correctly. So this is descriptive statistics by group. Descriptive statistics 
by group. Wow. That's descriptive statistics by group. Okay, so now for you to prove to me that you've done it, I want you to tell me the standard deviation for income for Buddhists. The standard deviation for income, what do you call it? The standard deviation for income for the Buddhist, what is the value? If you can tell me that value, it means you did it. What is the standard deviation for income for Buddhists? The point four is not correct. Exactly. Exactly. The answer is 1.61. You are getting it correct. Income, the standard deviation for income. Because you see, when you, when you do descriptive statistics, you, you will organize them according to groups. Some of you can't see it, so let me show you. So when you do the describe by here, you will get the groups for Buddhists, you get a group for Christians, and you get a group for Muslims. So you see the ones I'm highlighting. So it will give you each group and its descriptive statistics. And that is what your colleagues have done and I've gotten the value. So when you go to Buddhist, the income, the standard deviation for income, you can see it's the last one highlighted. The standard deviation for income for Buddhist is 1.61, 1 1.61. 1 so, and that is what is really happening. Fantastic work. Somebody says, what is the difference between mean and trimmed mean? I explained it to you, okay? You will never have to use a trimmed mean. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that, the fact that you are doing it means that you guys have cracked that. Okay, so that is it, that is it. So you can also do descriptive statistics according to location. I did it according to religion. You can do it according to occupation and according to location as well. You should try that. All you have to do here is to change the described by gen. Instead of R-E-L, you do O-C-C -C for occupation. And then you can get a result. But sometimes some people want according to groups, not just for everybody. Okay. All right. Now, once you've done that, type detach and detach the entire data. Type detach and run the detach. Type the detach and run the detach. So you can see mine here, I've typed detach, I click run, and then at the bottom, you see in the console, I have detach. So it means that you have removed the data set from the memory of R so that it doesn't conflict with any other thing else. This is all about descriptive statistics, and you should learn how to do that. You set exam questions already. As on this, as I'm talking to you. Okay. All right. The next thing now is to do something known as correlation. Okay. Correlation. All right. So, oh, we, we are going to do we are going to do uh, graph normality. Normality, and that is probably the last thing we do. Normality. Normality. Now, for you to do the normality, type the first three bullets. Type in the par inflow command. Okay? You're going to draw some graphs to indicate whether some of the data are normally distributed. So just type what you see in blue. We're going to do that now. You just type that for now. I 
the pack info command. Okay, so we are going to do some quick graphs before we wrap up. So you see that I have my part info. When you type the part info command, nothing shows. Okay, but because we are going to do something else, we have to attach again. So click attach and don't do the detach. Click that touch and don't do the detach yet. We are going to do the histogram. Please, if you don't have a touch, type the attach. And then the command you are going to have is histogram. So we want to find the histogram for quantity. Histogram for quantity. The COL that you see in the command is color. And I am having a color of yellow. Some of you should use blue. Some of you should use green. Some of you should use brown. It shouldn't all be yellow, yellow, yellow. I'm going to show you mine. So in my R here, I have histogram kill color yellow. Okay. I run it. And on the right here, you see the result. Okay. Let me just maximize it a bit. You see the results on the top uh, bottom right here. This is a histogram for kill. Okay. Now you can see that the resource is in the top left. So it is small. The reason is because the path inflow, what it does is that it gives you the graphs in all of them in one page. So it's going to put the next graph on the right of the, you know, and put all of them there. You're going to have the next graph there, the next graph there, the next graph there, you know. And that is nice. So you're gonna have one graph here, you're gonna have another graph there, you're gonna have another graph here, you know, like that. That is what we are going to do. Okay, so let's go to the next graph. The next graph is, it is plot, I've highlighted it, plot density for the price. So the first one was a histogram. Guys, you know histogram, so I'm not going to explain histogram. The next one after the histogram is the kernel density plot. There is an R document that I'm giving you on the group page. That will explain all of this for you. But for me, it's an exercise of you being able to draw graphs, that's all. Plot density P. And so let's plot that one. And once you run it, you see that on the right, you get a density P. I didn't add color. So I can change the command and, and, and do comma, okay? And then add a color. And I want to do the color say blue. Okay, I want to do blue. And apart from the color, you can look at the line width, L, W, D, okay? So I'll do comma line weight, and I want the line weight to be say six. You see how it will change. You see how it is now changed. The line weight gives you the thickness, and the color blue gives you the, the, the change in color. The next command, which you should do it later in yours. If you have your PDF with you, you can follow me on all of this by copying and pasting. The next one is quantile normal probability plot, okay, which you have in the slide. Let me just show you. Because if you are typing these things, uh, you will take time. Okay, so you have to copy and then paste. This quantile normal probability plot, it is also a measure of the normality. Once you do that, I have shown mine here. Once you do that, you get it like this. This is a quantile normal probability, but the picture on the bottom right. And you can even have box plot. Box plot. This is a box plot. Okay. 
This is another graph. So we have the graphs, all of them like, let me take you back to the previous one. And all of this, so this is only for some of the data. So when you look at kill, if you look at the yellow, the histogram, it tells you that kill is not normally distributed. If you look at the density for price, it appears that it has two peaks. It, it rises, falls, and then rises again, and then finally falls. It's looking a bit normal. Okay. And then when you look at the normal quantum probability plot for kill, again, okay, you can see that the data set are far away from the red line. When the data set are seated on the red line, then it is normally distributed when they are not seated on the red line. Now, the, the kernel density plot is a bell-shaped curve. So if it is usually a bell-shaped curve, all of these are plots. But plots are not good enough to tell us whether a data is normally distributed or not. Plots are not that good enough. Once you go and take your time and do the, the, the command, you type the command, cool, you get all the plots get all the plots. And these are the, these are them. This is what you have in your slide. So just go through it yourself. You see, learning, it, it, it's not like somebody is better than another. It simply means that a person stays with the work longer than you. I have stayed with this longer than you. If you want to be expert in it, you should also stay in it longer. That's it, stay in it longer and you'll crack it. So normality, we can't tell whether the data is normal just using plot. You got, you got to use test statistic. You got to use test statistic. And I don't know, it looks like I don't have that here. So I'm going to give it to you, the test statistic. The test statistic that you got to use to determine normality is known as the Shapiro.test. I'm giving it to you here. I have already attached. Okay, so I'm just typing that in the chat for you guys. So we are doing it for, for quantity. Okay, so this is in the chat and I'm also putting it in the, the WhatsApp chat. So I'm just going to show you the command for that. And just type shapiro.test. Okay, I'm just doing that. And I just did. I just type it, run it. And down here, you will see what I did in the console. You will see that I have shapiro.test. And this is Shapiro Welk Normality Test. And always you focus on the p-value. If the p-value is bigger than 5%, it means the data is normal. If the p-value is bigger than 5%, it means that that very data is normally distributed. Our p-value here is not bigger than 5%. It's lower. So it means that the Q, the variable Q, is not normally distributed. That's what it means. So if you are going to properly, even in a real life, you want to properly use this data, it's better to use the log of it, the logarithm. When the data is not normally distributed, it's better to use the log of the data to handle the data, especially if the others are normally distributed. So if we're doing proper regression, proper establishing causality of the relationship, it's best to use the log of Q instead of care. Of course, you will learn this later with me. So that is what you do. You've been able to test, and you can do the same thing for every other variable. Remove the kill, put P there. Remove the P, put C there. Remove the kill, put M there. And then you can tell which of the variables are normally distributed and which are not. As for the categorical variables, you don't have to check for their normality because they are not normal. They are either zero or one male or female. Okay. And then if there are more levels, then they are either male or female or something else. But they, are, they, are, they don't have descriptive statistics. Properly. So this is how 
you've got to execute all of which we have learned. Wow, what a way to begin. We have not even come to how to do the correlation in R. This is all about descriptive statistics and graph in R. Next time we'll look at how to do the correlation in R, which is the next command. My advice is that go and plot all of this. Go and type all of the commands in R, which you already have in the slides. Type it all already before you come. So that when you come and we are now looking at it, it will be much more appreciated. It will be much more understandable and it will be much more enjoyable. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the entire Kabuto, entire Kabuto.